the fruit of the spirit, man. We finished that. Yeah, we finished. Man. Yeah, let's Later. move on because we're dealing with the carnal mind right now. We're gonna yeah. get to the good side. Yeah. Let's go to uh Matthew 10. All right, kill all them phones, or I'm gonna collect them at the dope. As soon as you walk in. Matthew 10. Now let's look at this battle. Now this is a physical battle between your family members, but that's a war within itself in your mind too. Who do you want to please? You want to please God or you want to go with the carnal mind and please Big Mama? Go ahead. Think 10 and not, 34, what it say? Think not that I am coming to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So Jesus said, I didn't come to send peace. So if there's no peace, it's got to be war. And where's that war at? Go ahead. For I'm come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. A man's foes shall be they of his own household. A man's foes. That's where the war is, right in your house against your family members because you want to keep the word and they don't. What else? He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So if you love mama more than you love the word, Lord say, I don't need you. I don't need you. Like them cats that was knocking at the door. Like, Lord, Lord, let us in. He was like, I don't know you. I don't know you. But some people that do that, you know, to keep the word and Please, big mama. What else? Go ahead, man. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. So you got to toe the line all the way to the end. Till you die, you got to toe this line. There's going to be some battles. But the spiritual mind must win all the time. All the time. No matter how hard that carnal mind pops up, beat it down. Take a bat and beat yourself in the head with it if that's what it takes. Because we're going to read what the Lord said. If you got a problem lusting, pluck your eye out. Both of them. James 1. What does it say, man? We there? No, I am. Okay. <laughs> James 1. And verse um, 12. What it say? Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So blessed is the man that endureth temptation. He fought the battle. And laid, and what's laid up for him is what? A crown of life? Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So don't let nobody say, well, I'm tempted of God. I'm tempted of God, man. God don't tempt nobody with evil. He don't do that. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. And where does that lust start? Right here. It starts right here. And you get enticed. And what happens? Go ahead. Then when lust, has, when lust has conceived. So instead of you cutting it down or cutting it off or shaking it off, guess what? It conceived. We know what conceive is, right? And then what happens? Go ahead. It bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So you lost the battle right there. And guess what? You died in that fleshly mind because you didn't shake that thought off. You didn't get time to repent. The Lord got you right there. So when it bringeth forth sin, when it is finished, it bring forth death. Go ahead. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, uh, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be of kind and the first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, Slow to wrath. So let every man be what? Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Because I guarantee you, if you get mad at the drop of a hat, you're going to be doing something crazy. 
Because the book say be angry, but sin not. That means you can get mad, just don't act a fool. They say count to ten, one, two, three, whatever it is, to keep you from doing something crazy. If you got to remove yourself from the situation, do that. But if you can't control your emotions, you're going to be saying things you don't need to say and doing things you don't need to do. So this book say, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Somebody that's caught up in their emotions, you can't tell them nothing. Because they ain't trying to hear nothing you got to say. They're going to do what they're going to do. And then later on, after they done calmed down, oh, I shouldn't have said that, man. I shouldn't have did that. Well, you did it. But go ahead. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. That's right. Go ahead. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. That's right, man. We finished that? Yep. That's right. Wherefore lay apart filthiness, naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word of God which is able to save your soul. Go to Matthew, I mean Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18. And here's a carnal mind right here. But <laughs> carnal mind is okay today. Everything is all right. 18 Leviticus and verse 1. Read it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So even though Israel is scattered all over the world in captivity and other nations, the Lord tell you, don't do what these nations are doing. Don't do it. I don't care how many laws they pass saying it's all right to do. Don't you do it. Go ahead. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. So you're going to keep the judgments of the Lord wherever you are. Because that's your wisdom in the sight of your captive nation. What else? None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. So apparently they was doing some things in the land of Canaan, those nations. They were sleeping with their kinfolk. Now the Lord said, you ain't supposed to do that. Skip down to verse 20 and read it. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. So you're not supposed to sleep with your neighbor's wife. That's lust, right? That's the fleshly mind. We just read that. What's the lust of the uh, lust of the flesh? Adultery. So you ain't supposed to sleep with your neighbor's wife. Leave her alone. What else? And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord of thy God. I am the Lord. And don't be burning your kids up. That's what they used to do back then. Throw their kids in the fire. Now they call it abortion. I mean, what's the big debate? Planned Parenthood, right? Unplanned Parenthood. That's what they should call it. But anyway, that's another lesson. So you ain't supposed to kill your kids, whether they're in your stomach or out your stomach. Go ahead. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Now that's a big thing going on now. This whole month is dedicated to that. I was watching the news, man, and they had these this white supremacist group, right? About 54 of them loading up into a U-Haul, getting ready to assault the Pride Parade. Somebody saw them and thought that was real suspicious. 54 white cats getting in a U-Haul truck. <laughs> they had a nice arsenal too, boy. They was about to do some damage inciting a riot but hey the books say don't do it but hey it's all right now what else man neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith 
Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to um, lie down there too. It is confusion. Now I'm waiting for this. Because it's coming. It's coming, I'm telling you. They're going to say this is all right too. You're going to have people marrying their dogs and their cats. They already treat them like humans anyway. Have them sleeping all in the bed with you. Sitting at the table, eating out of your plate, licking you all in the face. Why not? Give them a ring on their paws. <laughs> what else, man? Defile not yourselves with any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled thereof. I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. That's right. Go to um, Deuteronomy 22. The Lord say don't do all this stuff, man. It's a fleshly mind. I need some fan because it's hot. Give me that one right there. Thank you, brother. I can feel sweat dripping down my back. Flip over to Deuteronomy. That's cool. That's cool. 22 and verse 25. Here's some lust right here, man. What does it say? But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and a man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. So we got a man. This is what we call rape, right? But now they try to turn the tables, you know. They try to blame the woman like she asked for it. In some instances, they try to do that. But it's wrong to begin with, whether she engaged or not. But go ahead. Verse 27. For he found her in the field and the betrothed damsel cried and there was none to save her. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found. So now here's something that was done out of order. But hey. They got busted. Then what happened? Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he has humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. Okay, so you got a little carnal mind kicked in. Saw a woman. Put some game on her. Guess what? Y'all in the bed sleeping together. And then you decide to go on about your business. It don't work like that with the Lord. Now the book said you got to get a daddy some money. Because you didn't humble his daughter. But just because the daddy ain't around, that don't shuck your responsibilities. Because the carnal mind kicked in. You could have shook it off. But you didn't. Now you got a responsibility. Go to um, Matthew 5. So the best way to avoid getting caught up like that is to shake it off before it conceives. Because once you get in that water, everything you've done in the past has been wiped clean, wiped away and forgiven. So now you got to start off fresh the right way. Before you used to do this, before you did that, now you do this, this, and this, and then you do that. If y'all understand what I'm saying. But let's read it. Matthew 5 verse 27, what does it say? Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So the Lord had made it hard already, because he know where it starts. You look, you lust, you act upon what you thought about. Go ahead. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. So if you got a problem looking and lusting, 
pluck that eye right out. It's better to get into the kingdom of Cyclops <laughs> than have two eyes going into the lake of fire. You got a problem looking and lusting. Get a knife, man. I seen it in that movie, The Terminator. He cut his eye out <laughs> and fixed it. Cut your eye out. What else, man? And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So if you got a problem stealing, you're looking at something, I need that. And you take it. The books say, cut your hand off. Cut it off. That's how serious this is. This carnal mind will get you in the lake of fire. Let's look at an example. You know, we got servants of God that got caught up, right? The last thing we can read about that was on Solomon's mind was killing Jeroboam. That was the last thing we read. And he wanted to kill this dude, and he had been anointed king. By the, the prophet told him he was going to be king because the, the kingdom had been split. But that's the last thing we can read. Solomon's intention was to kill this dude. But let's look at David. 2 Samuel 11. We ain't going to read all this. We know the story, but I'm going to just show you something. We're just going here for an example. 2 Samuel 11 and verse 1. What does it say? And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And a woman was very beautiful to look upon. So now we know what the lust of the flesh is, right? Adultery. We read that was on the top of the list. And here it is, David, looking at the woman, washing herself. And she was beautiful. You can look at a beautiful woman a long time. And that's what David did. Verse 3, go ahead. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife and Uriah of Hit of Uriah the Hittite? So he asked somebody, Who is that, man? And they told him, Man, that's Uriah's wife, man. Dog. Oh, can't mess with her. That's somebody's wife. Verse 4. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned into her house. So not only did he get in and, and slept with her, what else happened? Verse 5. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. She popped up pregnant. Man, we in trouble now. But we know the story. Skip down to verse um, 26. 26. And the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead. She mourned for her husband. Okay, we know the story. We ain't got to get into it. Everybody know the story. David tried to bring Uriah back, give him some food, give him something to drink. Hopefully he'll go back home to his wife, pass the baby off his head, but it didn't work. So he had the man killed. Let's go to, um, flip over to chapter 12 and let's see what happened. Verse 9, go ahead. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. So now David was a man after God's own heart. We read, we can read that, right? But didn't the, the carnal mind slip in on him? Yeah. And it conceived, didn't it? And it brought forth death. He got caught up. But did he wallow in his sorrows? No. He took it on the chin because the Lord told him what he was going to do to him. And he took it on the chin. Messed his whole house up. But go ahead. Thus said the Lord, behold, I will raise up against evil against thee out of thy own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. He shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. For thou did it secretly, but I would do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, that thou shalt not die. So David acknowledged his sin, man. He repented. I have sinned against the Lord. 
And the guy gave him a pass. He said, I ain't going to kill you, man. But I'm going to mess your house up. Go ahead. How be it, because by thy this because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So that child you had with Bathsheba while she was married to Uriah the Hittite, I'm killing that child. It ain't no baby now. This is a child. That means years have gone by and David thought he didn't got away with this. And that's how the Lord would do. He'll make you think you, you know, you sitting pretty for a minute. And next thing you know, he's going to weigh in on it. Lord, don't forget. You might have forgot, but the Lord don't. Let's go to um, 1 Samuel 25. Back up. Here's David again. This one angered and set in. And watch you watch him when he did something, tried to do something, and his uh, anger emotion. Something totally unnecessary over something simple as a plate of food. First Samuel 25 and verse 1. Read it. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in the house of Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his seat, sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. So now here's Nabal. He's having a big barbecue, man. 3,000 sheep, 3,000 goats. That's a whole lot of meat, ain't it? You can feed a whole lot of people with that, man. All them lamb chops, man. All that curry goat. But what happened? Go ahead. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shears. Now, they, now thy shepherds which were with us were hurt. So let me start. And now I have heard that thou hast shears. Now thy shepherds um, which were with us, we hurt them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them. All that the while they were in Carmel. So David sent ten men and told them, look, you go greet Nabal in my name and let him know, hey, you living good, man. I'm out here running around, running from Saul. And while your shepherds was out here, we, didn't, we protected them. Now we're a little hungry. Can we get a little, you know, one of them racks of lamb you got. Something. Can we get a little something to eat? Go ahead. Ask thy young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever come into thine hand, unto thy servants, and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to those words in the name of David, and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed from my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? He told his messengers, look, you tell David he ain't getting nothing from me. Now y'all get out of my face. Go ahead. So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told all those things. And David said unto his men, gird ye every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded his sword. And they went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. So when they told David what Nabal said, David said, let's go. We fixing the ride on him. All we wanted was something to eat. You can tell David got mad and he was about to kill this dude over some food. So he got his boys together, 400. 400 and 200 left behind to watch the stuff but then remember he was Nabal was married to Abigail the woman had good understanding so her servants told Abigail what Nabal did so she had to do some quick thinking skip down to verse 25 and read it let not my lord I pray thee regard this man of Bilal even Nabal for as his name is so is he Nabal is his name and folly is with him 
But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord whom thou didst send. So she had to tell David, David, I'm married to a fool. Called her own husband a fool. But hey, that was her husband. There wasn't nothing she could do about it. Go ahead. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholding thee from coming to shed blood and from avenging thyself with thine own hand. Now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be his Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid had brought unto my Lord, let it even be given to the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. So now she gave David something to eat, man. They got some, what, some bread and some raisins and some wine. Man, they wanted some meat. But hey, we'll take this, but go ahead. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. And the souls of thine enemies, them shall be um, shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord, according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of thy heart unto the Lord. So now she was doing some fast talking. So she was telling David, look, the Lord going to kill all your enemies, yada, 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 this, this and that. And when the Lord did all that, he's going to make you ruler over Israel. Go ahead. Either that thou hast shed blood causeless or that thou, my Lord hath avenging himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. So he said, she said, look, that this shall be no grief or offense of your heart unto my Lord. Either that thou hast shed blood causeless. There was no reason for David to ride on that town and kill everybody in there with a plate of food. No reason. But he got caught up in his emotion. What is it? Anger? Wrath? Mm -hmm. When you get that to that point, you start doing things you don't need to do. And that's what David was about to do. So she said, either thou hast shed blood cause or my Lord had to avenge himself. But when the Lord have dealt with my husband, then remember me, David. Go ahead. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. So even though David was caught up in his anger and emotion, he listened to this woman because she talked some sense into him. Some cats don't want to hear nothing. Can't talk sense into nobody. They get all mad. Oh, oh, oh. I ain't trying to hear. Well, go on about your business. Call me when you calm down. Go ahead. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou which hath kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand. From avenging myself with his own hand. The books say vengeance belongs to the Lord. But David was about to do some vengeance on his own. Why? A plate of food. Something as simple as that. He was going to kill every man in there. Go ahead. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisses against the wall. So if you hadn't came and met me and talked some sense, every man in that town would have been dead. And all that 3,000 sheep and goats, we would have ate that up too. <laughs> but let's move on. We finished that? 35. 35. Read that. Now. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and have accepted thy person. So David said, Go on up in peace. I listen to you. Everything's cool now. And what happened? The Lord killed Nabal. Ten days later. Numbers five. Numbers five. So when that other mind pop up serving a God, remember, you are serving a God. Numbers 5 and verse 11. What it say? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If a man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him. Uh-oh. Go ahead. And a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, and she be defiled, and there be no witnesses against her, neither she be taken with the manner, and the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled, 
or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him and he be jealous of his wife and she be not defiled. So we got a two twofold here, right? We got the situation where the woman did cheat on her husband. And then we got the situation here where the, the husband think his wife did cheat on him. Now, why would he think that? But the spirit of jealousy then came up on him. Whether she be defiled or not, nobody knows. Because it was hid. If she did do it, it was hid. If she didn't do nothing, he thinks she did something. Either way, it's a no-win situation for him because he that spirit of jealousy is, we can read what that say, man. Head's going to be rolling in. But then you got some sisters, you know. They are make their husband think that they're doing something, and they're not just to get him off. <laughs> and that's crazy. Spirit of jealousy, you better watch out, man. That green monster come up, it's bad. But then that's another lesson. But then that's the carnal mind. Romans 7. So you got to be careful as servants of God. Not saying we can't make no mistakes because we see some of the things David did. He got mad and wanted to kill somebody. Slept with somebody's wife. And here's this cat right here. He done got jealous because he thought his wife was doing something. Romans 7 and 14. Look at the battle right here. What does it say? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. But we know the law is spiritual, but we carnal. We in this flesh, sold under sin. Go ahead. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, when it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So what you want to do, you don't. And what you need to do, no. What you want to do, you don't do it. And what you don't do, you do. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the war in the mind. Flesh against the spirit. We finished that? Yeah. Go to Proverbs 24. We're going to get back to Romans. Proverbs 24. We're going to read 17 and 18. Because this is something we like to do when it happens. If you live long enough to see this, this is what the Lord tell you to do. 24 and 17, read it. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. And let not that heart be glad when he stumbling. Uh-oh. So the vengeance belong to the Lord, right? The Lord is going to take care of your enemies. But when he do, if you happen to see it, don't you be clapping. Don't be doing no backflips. <laughs> don't be saying, I told you so. The books say rejoice not when your enemy falleth. Go ahead. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Lest the Lord see it. Turn away his wrath from him, and guess what? He just might get you for rejoicing in somebody's misfortune that the Lord brought upon him. What happened when the Lord, when David found out that the Lord killed Nabal? He wasn't doing no backflips. He just said, "Blessed be the name of the Lord." Go to um, First Samuel two. Let's look at some more examples. Or some servants of God that got caught up. First Samuel 2. And pick it up at verse 12. First Samuel 2. And verse 12. 
What a shame. Now, the sons of Eli were the sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Now, the sons of Eli. Eli is the priest. Now, you, quite naturally, if you're the priest and you had kids, the kids should be good, right? Now, these is grown boys right here. Go ahead. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servants came, and while the flesh was in the seething, with the flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he stuck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, all that the flesh hook brought up is the priest took for himself. So these cats was gangster in the sacrifices, man. Everything was supposed to be done in order. But they would come in with their own, like, give me this. Go ahead. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest's servants came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he would not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as the soul thy soul thy desireth, then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now. And if not, I would take it by force. Now this ain't how the Lord's sacrifice supposed to work, man. But these cats was in charge of it, man. These are the priests. They're going to take it by force. Of course, the priest got his portion. But they was like, look, I don't want this stuff cooked. I'm going to cook it myself. Give it here. 17, what it say? Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for the men abhorred the offering of the Lord. So it got so bad that the people stopped bringing sacrifices, man, because of the, these cash actions. And these are the priest boys, you know? So what happened? Skip down to verse um, 22 and read it. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Not only were they gangster in the sacrifices, they were sleeping with the women. Servants of God, right? G getting caught up. Go ahead. And he said unto them, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil, your evil dealings by all these people. Nay, my sons, for there's no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of the, their father, because the Lord will slay them. So they was too far gone. The Lord had already put the reprobate mind on them. He was going to kill them. But Eli, man, he should have checked his boys because he knew what they was doing. But he didn't do it. Go to, um, flip over to 1 Samuel chapter 8. We almost done. Let's see what Israel did. Israel got caught up. The whole nation got caught up. Because what's one of the lusts of the flesh? Idolatry. Let's read how they fired the Lord. 1 Samuel 8 and verse 1. What does it say? And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. Now, these are Samuel's boys, right? Samuel was a good prophet. But what about his sons? Go ahead. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. But his sons wasn't like the daddy. They took bribes and perverted judgment. Servants of God, right? Go ahead. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to be judged, um, and to king to judge us like all the nations. So they told Samuel, Look, your boys, you old, and your boys ain't right. Now we want a king like all the other nations. Go ahead. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me. So Th Samuel prayed to the Lord and he, the Lord told him, look, go ahead and get the people what they want. They didn't reject you. They rejected me. They want to be like everybody else. They want a physical king over them as opposed to a spiritual king. Go ahead. That I should not reign over them, according to all the works which they have done since the day I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day. So it sounds like they fired the Lord, right? 
That's what it sounds like. Go ahead. Wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. That's 19. Yeah, skip down to uh, 19 and read it. So he told them, he gave them what they wanted. Go ahead. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us. So Samuel did all he could to talk him out of it. He's saying, look, I'm going to give you a king. He's going to take your sons, take them off the war. He's going to take half your livestock, yada, yada, yada. And they were like, oh, well, we still want a king. Go ahead. That we may also be like all the nations and that our, our kings may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, hearken unto their voice and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the members of Israel, go ye every man unto his city. Okay, go to uh, Genesis 4. Genesis 4. And I look at it like this. If a servant of God is caught up in his emotions and he ain't going to listen to me or any other body that's, body that's talking to him, ain't nothing you can do about it. Because the Lord tried to talk Cain out of doing something crazy. And if he didn't listen to the Lord, who am I or who are you to try to talk somebody else out of doing something crazy? They're going to do it anyway. Genesis 4 and 1, read it. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain he had, uh, to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? So Cain and Abel made an offering. Abel brought the firstling of his flock. Cain brought some fruits. The Lord accepted Abel's offering and didn't accept Cain's. And Cain was what? He was mad. That's anger, right? And the Lord asked him, why you mad, man? And he's going to explain to him. Verse 7, go ahead. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall his, be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So the Lord tried to give him some sound advice. He said, look, if you do well, you're going to be accepted, man. You know, you just didn't do right this time. You can get another shot at it. But if you don't, sin lieth at the door, and you're going to do something that you don't need to be doing. But did he listen to the Lord? Nope. He wallowed in that anger. He wanted to get his brother. Go ahead. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Killed his own brother. His brother didn't do nothing to him. But he killed him. And the Lord tried to talk him out of it. Didn't listen to him. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. David listened to Abigail, didn't he? She talked them out of killing everybody up in that time. Verse 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. What does it say? Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat that same spiritual meat, and did all drink that same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So they drank of that spiritual rock. That was Jesus. They gave them the commandments, gave them all the laws, statutes, and the judgment that they needed to follow in order to become a peculiar people and a holy nation. But what happened? But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. So God killed a lot of them, because what happened? carnal mind set in. Go ahead. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So what got them in trouble? They lusted after evil things. And that got them in trouble. 
And that's an example for us. So we can go back and read it, but not in this lesson. You can do that on your own. Go ahead. Neither be ye idolaters. Idolaters. That's a, what? Lust of the flesh, ain't it? Idolatry. Go ahead. As were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the de destroyer. So murmuring, you can't do that either. Eleven, go ahead. Now all these things happen unto them for example, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So all those things that happen are an example to us not to do it. Because we know the end result of it. You want to do idolatry? Guess what? The Lord going to kill you. You want to tempt Christ? Guess what? The Lord going to send some snakes and bite you up. And you want to murmur? He going to destroy you. Go to um, Romans 7. Back up to Romans 7. I'll flip over to Romans 7. And read verses 18 and 19. Romans 7, 18 and 19. Read it. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For I know in my flesh ain't no, no good thing, man. Nothing. For the will, for how to perform that which is good, I find not, 19, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. There it is, carnal mind versus the spiritual mind. Which one you going to do? It's a battle. Who's going to win? Spiritual mind might have won today. What about tomorrow? What about the next day? And the next day? So it could be what? 65 years to one day <laughs> that you went bad. The one day you went bad, right? 65 years you was good. But let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 9. Flip over to 1 Corinthians 9. Flip back. Flip over. I'm sorry. We ain't like your regular Sunday go lucky church where we get paid for doing this. Everybody up in here got a job. But is it all right if we choose to? The books say you can. But it ain't happening. Because we got a job. We work for a living. That dude out there driving what a Mercedes? Who is this dude? Got a, somebody got a Tesla up in here, right? The man worked for it, right? He didn't come out of here. Everything y'all contribute go to the upkeep of this class. Don't nobody in here get nothing out of that box. But let's see, because some of the cats in the Corinthian church was jumping on Paul now. And Paul had to set him straight. It's within his right to do it, but he don't do it. Nine and one, read it. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and, and Cephas? Or I only, and Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? Who goeth on a warfare, warfare, warfare any time to his own charges? Who planteth the vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say are these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Does God take care for the oxen? So he's telling them, look, you know, I'm doing all this for the Lord. 
And whatever y'all contribute, if I choose to partake in it, I can. Because why are you going to have the ox out there doing all the work and he can't get him a little corn while he's working out there muzzling? You know, you can't put a muzzle on him say, ox, you can't eat this, man. You just do what you got to do and I'll give you something later. No, let him eat while he's working. He's doing all that work. Let him have a couple ears of corn here and there. Go ahead. Or saith he it all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, it is a great thing that we shall reap, our, uh, reap your carnal things. If others be partakers of this power over you, are we not rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. So he had to set them straight, because there was a lot of people that was in his Corinthian church, they was thinking crazy. They was thinking crazy about Paul and Barnabas. And he had to set them straight. Hey, we, we built this up for the Lord. If we choose to partake in this, we can. But we don't. Because it ain't about the money. It's about winning souls and saving them. Go ahead. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the holy things of the temple? And they that which wait on the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any should make my glory and void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But against my will and dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. So Paul had to set them straight, man. Because their minds was going in another direction. So he set them straight. He was like, look, I don't need the stuff that y'all have. But if I choose to partake in it, I can. That's why we workers up here, man. We workers in the vineyard. The vineyard don't pay me. Because if I had to rely on y'all. <laughs> 50 cent in the bank account. What? Potato chips and biscuits for dinner. But let's read some more, man. <laughs> Flip back to chapter, for chapter one. Read verse 10. Now here's some stuff. Wait a minute. Yeah. What I say? 10? Yes. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. This is big time amongst Israel right here. And we could put names on them. You know, Bowie, Elijah, Danny. 10, what it say? Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye speak this, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So he said, him, Look, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. But do we have them? Yes, we do. Go ahead. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are, cont are contentions among you. So there's contentions among the servants of God. What are they? Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul. Some say I'm with Paul. And I am of Apollos. Some say I'm with Apollos. And I am of Cephas. Some say I'm with Peter. And I am of Christ. Some say I'm of Christ. Go ahead. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So is Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified for you? No. Were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. Go ahead. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I have baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should make, be made of none effect. So that's a division amongst Israel. You know, we could see it. Don't make me no difference, man. If you're teaching the word, I'll be there. But, like I said, that's just amongst the people. 
what they call a camp camp banging or whatever it is. H O J I O G I C O J. You know, I'm with this person, I'm with that person. Eh, please. I ain't got time, dude. But it's out there. Mark 9. Mark chapter 9. So if there's a camp somewhere, then if we don't have one set up and somebody need to go somewhere, if Bowie is there, I'll send them over there. i say, hey, there's a camp over there. Go over there. But no, I still want to watch y'all. No, you need to go. If there's a holy convocation somewhere, you need to go. You can get off, come home and watch us online after you come from the Holy Convocation where you at. But you know, people still in that carnal mind when it comes to that. Mark 9 and pick it up at verse 38. Mark 9 and 38. And let's see what this say. Because the disciples got caught up. 38, what it say? And John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. And we forbade him because he followed not us. So John said, Jesus, man, we saw somebody casting out devils in your name, but he ain't a part of us. He don't follow us. So we told him, man, you can't do that. What did Jesus tell him? Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do miracles in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. That's right. So Jesus told him, don't tell him to do that. If he's doing it and it's working, he's with us. Go to um, Matthew 20. That's why you don't see us going in them other Israelite camps. You know, they come here for some reason. I don't know why. I do know why. But, but you don't see us going to another Israelite camps trying to Disrupt what they doing. They Israel. That's a, that's a good start, you know. Leave them alone. If they got a problem with us, they'll come over here, and then we'll deal with them. But we ain't going over to no IUIC or whoever these other cats are that's around here. Leave them alone. They know they Israel. They'll figure it out later on. Maybe. But like Jesus told him, leave the dude alone, man. Leave him alone. What'd I say? Mark, Matthew? Matthew 20. Verse 20, read it. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, what wilt thou? She said unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit, one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy kingdom. So this is John and James' mama. She coming up to Jesus and he asked her, what you want? And she said, grant these my two sons, that they may sit on your right and on your left in the kingdom. Uh-oh. Go ahead. But Jesus answered and said, you know not what she asked. You don't know what you're asking for, woman. Go ahead. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, we are able. So they said, yeah, we can do this. Ride or die, Lord, we with you. Go ahead. And he said to them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on the left is not give mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. So he told them, yeah, you're going you gonna to drink of my cup and be baptized with the baptism. But to sit on my right hand and left, that's the father's decision, not mine. And what happened when the other ten heard it? Go ahead. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. Boy, they was hot against John and James, boy. Like, what? Y'all trying to hedge the bet on us? <laughs> we're about to go down. Go ahead. <laughs> but Jesus called unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life ransom for many. So Jesus had to calm him down, right? 
because they was mad. Indignation is not some run of the mill like I'm mad. You know, no, you no. <laughs> you get it indignated. Is that right? Indignated. That's a word now. You about to do something <laughs> to somebody. So Jesus, they listened to Jesus. He calmed them down. Go to um Luke 10. Luke chapter 10. So we see service of God can clown, man. They can get caught up, but don't get too caught up. Luke 10 and verse um, 38. Luke 10 and 38. What does it say? Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So now here's Martha and Mary. And Mary was like, man, when Jesus came to town, she was like, boom, I'm right there. I got to hear what this guy got to say. Go ahead. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. So Martha was like, she was always busy. She never had enough time to listen to the words. She was too busy doing other things instead of focusing on the Lord. So she went up to Jesus and said, look, I need Mary back here, man. I got too much stuff to do. I can't do it by myself. She always running off when you show up. Go ahead. And Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away That's from her. That's right. He told her, look, Martha, you always preoccupied with everything, man. Take a break. Listen to the word a little bit. Like your sister. She got the right idea. Go to uh, John 21. We almost done. John 21. Got to watch that carnal mind, man. The world is full of it. But as a servant of God, you got to be careful when it pops up. Shake it off. Quickly. John 21 and 15, read it. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Joseph, lovest thou me more than these? He said to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. So now he's talking to Peter. He asked him three times. Peter got a little, you know, Lord, you know I love you, man. And he's telling him again, feed my sheep. Verse 18, go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands and, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Okay, so he told Peter when you was young. You gird, you put your own clothes on, you walked about where you wanted to go. When you go, when you get old, somebody gonna have to help you. So much for being crucified upside down. Can't read that nowhere in the book. Sound like Jesus told Peter, you're gonna get old and die. Verse 19, go ahead. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter turned about, see the disciple whom Jesus loved, following. Uh -oh, that's John, right? Remember, John, they wanted to, John's mama asked Jesus, can they sit at the right and left? And the disciples was angry. What happened, man? Go ahead. In which also leaned on his breast and suffering, said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Peter said to him, saying to, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Uh-oh. 
He Jesus. asked Jesus, Jesus, what, what about John? Uh, Jesus, what, what about John? What he going to do? Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, if I will he, that he tear with till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Uh oh, now they spreading some rumors now. Jesus said he ain't going to die. That John, boy, I knew something was up with him. Go ahead. Yeah, Jesus said not unto him that he should not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? So Jesus had to set him straight again. He said, Jesus, I, I didn't say he wasn't going to die, but if I did, what is that to you? We got business to take care of. Stop worrying about John. We finished that? Yes. 1 Corinthians 2. Murmuring, right? Get you in trouble, won't it? But whenever we see instances like this, man, it was always somebody to make sure things didn't get out of hand. Abigail kept David in check. Jesus kept his disciples in check. Cain didn't listen. Eli's boys didn't listen. So we got examples of, of both where you people to listen and people won't listen. And we know the examples the end result of the people that did listen and we know the results of people that didn't listen. So you got to put yourself in what category you're going to be in. You're going to be the one that listens to the sound advice or you're just going to say skip it, get caught up in your carnal mind and do what you're going to do and reap the consequences after that. It's all up to you. The choice is yours. You can do it the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> First Corinthians two and verse 12, what does it say, man? Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. Because he got a carnal mind. The natural man has a carnal mind. He can receive the things of the spirit of God. Go ahead. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. But he that's got the spiritual mind judges all things. Yet himself he is judge of no man. But we got the mind of Christ, right? That's that spiritual mind. That's what you need. Go to uh, Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Pick it up at verse 1. Philippians 2 and verse 1. 2 and 1. Read it. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that's the mind Christ had. Comfort of love. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man of other things. Skip down to verse, I mean, flip over to chapter four and read verse eight. So we need that mind of Christ. That's the spiritual mind. But remember that carnal mind is going to pop up. And that's the battle. That's the war. Spiritual warfare. Four and, um, and verse eight. What does it say? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So you got to think on those things, man. The pure stuff, the honest stuff, lovely, good. Think on those things. Verse 9, go ahead. 
Those things which ye have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So Paul tell him, look, those things which you heard and learned and received from and heard of me, do them. So he was setting the example. And the God of peace shall be with you. Go ahead. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein were ye also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect or want, for I have learned in whatsoever state, state I am, therewith to be content. So Paul was happy because they were sending them stuff, man. You know, and he said, look, not that I speak in respect of one. I didn't need the stuff because I've learned to be content with whatever state I'm in. If I have to eat hamburgers every night, cool. But if a steak roll up, hey, I take that too. But I'm content eating hamburgers every day. If that's the case. Some chicken too, man. But go ahead. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I am instructed both to f be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. So I'm content. I know how to adapt to every situation I'm in. And deal with it as a servant of God. If I'm hungry... I'll be happy and hungry. If I'm full, I'm happy and full, right? Mm -hmm. I know how to be abased and I know how to flourish. 13, go, what does it say? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 1 Peter, 2 Corinthians 10. So we got to get that spiritual mind, man. Got to kick it in the overdrive. Hate to see a servant of God go off the deep end over something. Nothing. Don't make no sense. It's like you want to take him and slap some sense into him, right? Wake him up. And they'll snap out of it. Oh. But anyway, 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 1, read it. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am based among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. That's right. Even though we're walking in the flesh, we ain't warring after the flesh. We're warring against something else. Go ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and everything high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's that war of the mind, man. It says our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Through God to pulling down the strongholds, casting down what? Imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. That's that carnal mind. Casting it down, beating it down, and bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. What's next, man? First, First Peter, Peter 4. You got to get your mind right. First Peter four and verse one. What does it say? For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. So just like Christ suffered in the flesh, we got to arm ourselves likewise with what? The same mind he had. Go ahead. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live in the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have brought the will of the Gentiles where we walk in the lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you. So in time past, we did all of that. Walk in lasciviousness, lust of the flesh, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries. Carnal mind, right? Mm -hmm. Now you don't do it no more. They think you crazy. 
because you don't do evil no more. They're talking bad about you. Go ahead. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached unto them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to the God and spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So the end is coming. So you got to be what? Sober. That means not drinking. I'm uh, not drinking sober, but would I say that right? That means not drunk. Be sober. Spiritually. Not physically. Be spiritually sober. Go ahead. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. And have fervent hot love among yourselves. Not that lustful hot love. We're talking hot love. Fervent charity on a spiritual level, right? Right. Go ahead. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Okay. Let's go to Romans 7. And some of this stuff, man, it's a hard pill to swallow, man. Mm -hmm. That fruits of the spirit is rough. Long suffering, Ooh we. <laughs> Temperance, oh man. You got some? Be nice if we had them all, right? But it's a work in progress. Ain't it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the dynamite stick in the match. Do I'll tell you later. <laughs> Romans 7 and verse 20. What does it say, man? Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Which is in my members. So there it is again, man. The war of the mind. Carnal versus the spiritual. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. So that's a war going on in your head, man. Think about it. You want to do right. But you don't. You don't want to do wrong. But you do it. So how do we fix it? Verse 24, go ahead. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Okay, go to Hebrews 4. We got one more place. And it can be done, man. It can be done. You just have to want to do it real bad. Because the only person that did it was Jesus. Hebrews 4 and verse 14. What does it say? Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest that which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. Yet without sin. So here's Jesus. When he walked this flesh, guess what? He was in this flesh. But the books say he felt our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are. So he was tempted too. But guess what? He didn't sin. That's the big thing. He did not sin. But we do. 16, what does it say? Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we have may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's right. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's why we need that mercy when we get caught up on the other side of the mind. But if you don't listen to the mercy... Tell you like my mama said, I don't know what to tell you. Last place, Romans 8. 
So the last verse we read was, O wretched man, who shall deliver me? I thank God. Verse 8, chapter 8 and 1, what does it say? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So who's going to condemn you for walking after Christ? Ain't no condemnation in doing right. Go ahead. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So they that are after the flesh... They do mind what? The things of the flesh. And we read it, right? Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, idolatry, revelings, and a whole bunch of other stuff too. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Ain't that something? Spiritually minded is life and peace, man. Peace. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you're in the flesh, you can't please God because you're doing everything contrary to the word. Go ahead. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But we're not in the flesh, right? We're in the spirit. If the spirit of God dwell in you, that's the thing. You can be in the spirit all you want. Which one? If the spirit of God, if the word ain't in you. I don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bottles by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. So just because we're in the flesh, that don't mean we have to act like we in it. Yeah, we got a flesh and blood body, but we don't need to have that flesh mind, that carnal mind. Go ahead. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. So if you live after the flesh, you got a flesh and blood body, you living with a fleshly mind, guess what? You're going to die. The Lord going to wake you up and kill you again. Go ahead. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So as many led by the spirit of God, that's his word. That's that spiritual mind of Christ. You are the sons of God. So that's the word of mind, the carnal flesh versus the spiritual mind, which is Christ. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus name. Okay, we're going to have some announcements, right? We welcome you and hope today's lesson increase your knowledge of the Holy Bible. CDs and DVDs of the Sabbath lessons are available. Please place your order and donation in the offering envelope and it will be filled on the next Sabbath. The children's class, ages 3 through 5 and 6 through 12, starts at the same time as the adult Sabbath lesson in the assigned location. Bring your child so that their knowledge may be increased. Train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Adult question and answer is from 4.30 to 6.30 after the Sabbath lesson. Teen forum every other Sabbath at 4.30. We have question and answer every Wednesday at 5 p.m. via the telephone conference line. The number and access code are located at the top of the lesson. Or see the live stream of question and answer at www.thykingdomcome7.com. If you are interested in being baptized, please place your name on the list at the literature table. Remember to follow the dress code when attending our services. Men should remove all hats and all head coverings during service times. Shorts are not permissible. Women should wear head coverings such as a hat or scarf during the service. Women should not wear tight-fitting pants or skirts or revealing clothing. Attire should be modest according to the Bible. If your child becomes restless during the Bible lesson, we encourage you to remove your child from the room until he or she is settled. Your tithes and offerings are always appreciated. Please place your tithes and offerings in the offering envelope and deposit it in the offering box. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for coming. We hope to see you the next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. All right, a couple of announcements. Uh, we had Pentecost. 
Uh, everything went great and smooth. Thanks to the hospitality committee, give yourselves a hand. The kitchen looked phenomenal once again, man. I can't believe it. But then I can believe it. Also, the clothing giveaway is coming up. It's the second Sunday in August. I believe that's um, August the 14th, I think it is. I think that's it. Yeah, August 14th is a clothing giveaway. So bring your clothes so we can give them away and then we're going to barbecue some food for the people. It's always a good thing. We do this every year. And we have the um, the monthly fast is coming up. It's June 28th at sundown. June 28th, sundown is a monthly fast. So those that are willing and able participate because it's good to fast to the Lord. And we are commanded once a year on a day of atonement to fast, but hey, anything else is extra on your part. And the Lord will look down on that and you know, you never know what will happen. The um, School of Excellence, five years they were doing kindergarten through eighth grade. Now starting in the 20, the 2022-23 school year, they're going to be kindergarten through the 12th. So praise the Lord for that. It's definitely growing. And that's definitely a blessing right there, man. Got your own school. Uh, property, please pray for us. We get to property in other places. Uh, Canada is still shut down for some reason. They don't want to open the borders to the United States. So we haven't been up there since the pandemic started, but Brother Lee is holding it down up there. So give him a hand. So eventually once they open up the borders, you know, that'll be the first stop on the list. Also, we have the um, homeless outreach monthly schedule. The donations needed a bottle of water, ground turkey, variety packs of individual chips. Deliver the items by July the 2nd so they can go out July the 10th and um, feed the homeless. Your other date is August the 14th. You want to make an adjustment on that? Because that is the clothing giveaway. Huh? Okay. Also, um, what else? Anything else? Nothing. Oh yeah, the video game. Somebody left this thing at Pentecost. I don't see too many kids here, so it don't belong to any of the kids that's here. Whatever this thing is, it's some kind of game. Nintendo something. So we got it. If it's yours, come on up here and get it. If not, it'll still be here when you show back up again next Pentecost. Uh, oh, yeah, the baptism. I don't know who, who is. No, they just signed this. Who is J.L. Chiva? Who is that? Jael, J.L. I know Jennifer Anders. I know who that is. But who is Jael Chiva? Will the real Jael Chiva please stand up? No? Okay. Well, we got a baptism coming up. One is going to be at the beach, and one is going to be at a river. Once he find one close, because I'm not driving three hours to no river. If you can get one closer, we can do that. But if nothing else, we're going to have, um, oh, also, you know, keep everybody in prayer like always, because we definitely need it. Because times are not getting better. They're only getting worse. And if you're a servant of God, it's definitely going to be worse for you. 
So keep that or keep us in prayer, everybody. So we're gonna have the um we're gonna have question and answer at 430, 440. We'll do 440. And then the um women's prayer, you can start it at four o'clock if you want to and get 40 minutes, or you can start it at 410 and get 30 minutes, whatever you want to do. But we'll start QA at 440. Okay. Any hospitality meetings next week? Oh, and the the, um, the get together was it July? We decided on July to we need a date in August instead of July. Okay, so cancel that get together that was supposed to be in July. It's going to be in August. either the 21st or the 28th, because we got the clothing giveaway on the 14th. The 28th, August 28th, we're going to look for a, a place, a spot, some kind of what is it, some kind of beach or something, a park or a beach where we all can get together, like we used to do when we had the thing for the kids at the beach, but that was put on hiatus for a minute. So we're going to do something on August 28th. Oh, okay, that was for the whole class? Thing that gets together, she's talking about okay. I know some of the family from Vegas kept asking about we we're gonna do the beach thing because you know it was tight because of the COVID, it was shut down, and I think Mother's Beach is closed for some bacteria thing. So, this, so this we'll, is gonna uh, replace whatever we was doing at the beach. Hmm. So, it's gonna be at the park on August 28th. We'll have more information on where and the times and all that. Which keeps. We can want to find a beach. But keep that date like open. Dockwaller Beach, possibly. August 28th. We'll, we'll talk about yeah. it later. Just keep August 28th open because it's a good thing, man. Come on down and eat some food and, and all that good stuff. So we're going to stand and face Jerusalem and open up. I mean, close out. <laughs> Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. In Jesus' name we pray. The King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen.